So now children, we see another example. The three examples that we have seen so far, in all those examples, the time was a whole number. Now here in this case, it is as a mixed fraction. We are going to calculate the compound interest, which is due for two and a half years on 6,000 rupees, which is being lent out at 10%, wherein the compound interest is occurring annually. That means the interest that is charged, that is being charged per year. But we are only taking, this amount is only being lent out for two and a half years. So let's see how we go about with these type of questions. We first calculate the interest for the first year. Interest for the first year will again be given as PRT upon 100 wherein the principal will be 6000. The rate of interest is 10%. The time will be 1 because we are only calculating it for the first year and this will be divided by 100. So for the first year the interest turns out to be 600 rupees. We next find the amount due after 1 year. It will be P plus I1. The principal is 6000 plus 600. That gives me 6600 rupees. This acts as the principal for the second year. Now we calculate the interest for second year. This is again PRT upon 100. Now the principal is 6600 rupees. The rate of interest is still 10. The time is 1 upon 100. This gives me 660 rupees. We next find the amount due after 2 years. Here it is P plus I2. The principal is 6600 plus 660, which is 7260 rupees. This becomes the principal for the next half year, which we have to calculate. Now, we have already calculated it for the two years. We only have to calculate it for the next half a year. So we write interest for half year. This is again PRT upon 100. The principal is 7260. The rate of interest is 10. The time in this case, now because we are only calculating it for half a year, the time it will be 1 by 2 and it is divided by 100. 2 ones are 3 is a 6, 6 is a 12 and 3. So we get it as 363 rupees. So we find the amount due which is P plus I3 7260 plus 363. 6 plus 6 is 12, 6 and 7. So it is 7623 rupees. We have to calculate the compound interest. It will be amount minus principal. The amount is 7623 minus 6000, which is 1623 rupees. So the, the compound interest in this case is 1623 rupees. So if you see here, when the time was two and a half years, we first calculated the interest for the first year, we calculated the interest for the second year, and finally we calculated the interest for half of the year that was remaining. We have done this because the interest was calculated annually. But we can also come across questions wherein the compound interest is calculated half yearly. Half yearly means in six months time. That means it will be calculated twice in one year. So let us see a question of how we will solve that if the compound interest is calculated half yearly. The 
question says find the amount at the compound interest on rupees 10000 at 8% per annum in one year interest being compounded half year. Now whenever the interest is compounded half yearly because the rate of interest you see it is per annum. Per annum means it is yearly. So therefore before we start with the question the rate of interest will be now if the rate of interest is 8% per year so for half year how much will be the rate of interest it will be 8 upon 2% per half year so that means it will be 4% per half year we will only do this when the compound interest is calculated half year. So in this case because the interest is per year and the compound interest is calculated half yearly therefore we change the rate of interest to half yearly. And how do we do that? By dividing this by 2. If the question would have been wherein the compound interest is calculated quarterly. Quarterly means one fourth. In that case if the rate of interest was 8% per annum we would have calculated the rate of interest per quarter and it would have been 8 divided by 4 which is 2% per quarter. Now here first thing that we do is rate of interest we change it from per year to per half year. The next thing is the time. Now the time here will always be given by 2 into n where n is the number of years. So this will give me 2 into 1 which is 2 half years. That means in 1 year there are 2 half years. In 3 years there are 6 half years. In 3 years, 3 years will correspond to 6 half years. 2 and a half years. 2 and a half years means this is 5 by 2 into 2 which gives me 5 half years. So it is very important before we even start with the question, we change the rate of interest to per half year and we change the time to how many half years we need. Now, we now because we have got this, so we have to calculate it for 2 half years. So we first find the interest for first half year. It will be given by the formula PRT upon 100. The principal here is 10,000. The rate of interest will be 4%. The time will be 1. Why? Because we are only calculating it for the first half year. And this will be divided by 100. So it gives me rupees 400. Next we find the amount due. After first half year and this will be P plus I1. The principal is 10,000 plus 400 which gives me 10,400 rupees. This acts as the new principal. Now we have to find the interest for second half year. Interest for second half year. This will again be PRT upon 100. The principal now will be 10,400 rupees. The rate of interest is 4. The time will again be 1 upon 100. We multiply 4 for the 16, 4 1 the 4. The interest for the second half year is 416. So we find the amount due. plus I2. The principal is 10,400 plus 416. Which is 10,816 rupees. And the compound interest is amount minus principal. Which is 10,816. 
10,816 minus 10,000 which gives me 816 rupees. So we get the amount due as 10,816 rupees and the compound interest as 816 rupees. What is important to note here is that we have changed before we applied the uh, first principle we changed the rate of interest from per year to per half year and we calculated how many half years will be there in one year if there would have been three and a half years if we would have to calculate interest for three and a half years so we first change it to a improper fraction so we write seven by two and we multiply this by two that gives me seven half years in case of quarter we multiply the number of years by 4 because in one year there will be 4 quarter. Okay, I hope this example is clear to you and on how will you be calculating the compound interest if it is if the interest is calculated half yearly but the rate of interest is given per year. Now in all these questions there hasn't been any sort of a repayment. Now suppose I take a loan and I pay a part of that loan every year. So what happens to the interest? Let us see with the help of an example. The question says Ranbir borrows 20,000 rupees at 12% compound interest. If he repays rupees 8400 at the end of first year and rupees 9680 at the end of second year find the amount of loan outstanding at the beginning of third year now in this question Ranbir has borrowed a certain amount of money but he goes on paying a part of it every year. So let us see how we do this. We first calculate the interest for first year which will be PRT upon 100. The principal is 20,000. The rate of interest is 12%. The time is 1 divided by 100. is 2400 rupees. The amount due after one year will be P plus I1. The principal is 20,000 plus 2400 rupees which is 22,400 rupees. Now this is the amount that Ranbir was supposed to pay after the first year. But how much does he pay? He only pays 8,400. So the amount outstanding after first year, after one year, would be 22,400 minus 8,000. which is 14,000 rupees. Now this is the amount because Ranbir has already paid 8,400. It will be deducted from the amount due and the remaining amount 14,000 will be the amount on which the interest will be charged for the second year. So that means this 14,000 will become the principal amount for the second year. So now we calculate the interest for second year. This is again PRT upon 100. The principal is 
14,000. The rate of interest is 12 into 1 upon 100. 12 fourths are 48. 12 ones are 12. And 4 is 16. So we get the interest as 1,680 rupees. Now please keep in mind for any questions which are related to rupees and paise, you will always express it in the rupee and paise only. We next find the amount due after two years. Which will be P plus I2. The principal here was 14,000 plus 1680 which is 15,680. So this was the amount that Ranbir was supposed to pay. But how much did he pay back? He paid 9680. So the amount outstanding after two years will be 15,680 minus 9680. 